Hello, everyone. In the previous video, we talked about how to calculate uh, average returns, right? We talked about geometric average return and arithmetic average return. So these measures are quite useful in terms of um, evaluating past performance. And uh, when using those measures, we are essentially rely, um, relying on what we call realized or historical returns, okay? So this is all about sort of an evaluation of the past, right? But how about the future, right? So as investors, we are very much interested in, uh, you know, the future performance of our investments as well. So how are we gonna evaluate that? Uh, and in this video, I, I want to introduce a very useful um, measure for exactly doing that. And that is called the expected return. So to motivate that further, let's just assume that we have bought some shares of a stock. So let's say Google, Microsoft, whatever, right? We know the price today, right? So let's call that P0. And let's suppose we will hold this stock for one year and we aim to sell it at the end of the year. And let's assume that there won't be any stock splits, there won't be, you know, any dividend payments, etc. So it's just a very simple form of investment. So although we know the price today, right, let's call it, let's say it is $100, we don't know the uh, price in the future, right? It can take, uh, you know, many values. Right? There can be many things happening over the course of the year that could cause this price to increase dramatically or fall dramatically. Okay. Um, and this would be thing, you know, due to things related to the general economy or uh, more specifically to the industry or due to some firm specific news. Right. But we still want to get an idea about, okay what will be our expected return given all this uncertainty. So to present the idea in a more stylized manner, let's assume that the price can either go up under 20, that would mean a 20% return, or let's say it may go down to $90, okay? And because these events are uncertain, we need to attach some probabilities to those, right? And probabilities by definition have to add up to one. And we have two possible states here. So let's suppose the probabilities are equally likely for simplicity. So with 50% probability, the price will go up to under 20. And with 50% probability, the price will go down to 90. So what is our expected return, right? So if the price goes up to 120, we'll get 20% return. If it goes down to 90, our return will be minus 10%. So expected return is a probability weighted average of uh, these return observations. So what I need to do, I need to take each possible return outcome and weigh them by their respective probabilities. And that will give me the expected return. Okay, here we are. So we've got 0.5 probability times 20% and 0.5 probability times minus 10%. And because the uh, probabilities are 50% each, this will give me an expected return of 5%, right? So in general, for example, uh, if the stock every year can go up by 20% and can go down by, or go down by 10% uh, with equal probability, in the long run, this is the sort of the return I will obtain by holding this uh, stock. Now we can also write this uh, formula in a more formal way, uh, mathematical way. So the expected return for any asset, right? So um, in this case, we are talking about stocks, will be a probability weighted average um, 
uh, or let's say problematic uh, outcome of the possible return observations. So we have to have probabilities of each state. So in this case, there are two states, right? So the price will go up to under 20 or down to 90. So we start from the first state and we have two in total in this case, but in general, right, we can have n number of states and for each state, we need a return observation as well. So this is telling me, multiply the probability uh, with the return outcome in that state and sum them up. So this is the summation figure. There you go. So this is how we calculate expected returns. And this is what we call a forward looking measure because essentially we are trying to get gain insights about the future performance of the stock. In the next video, we will uh, talk more about the riskings, right? Uh, because, you know, return is just half of the story. When we are sort of making investment decisions, we shouldn't just look at return, we should look at risk as well. So we will come to that in the next video. But uh, thanks for watching this one, and uh, we will catch up again in the next video.